Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we've had going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryan and Pedro Mateus. <laughs> and everybody watching us live. Hey, how's it going? No, Middle of the week. Maybe you're watching a little bit later. Uh, I do like to say, fair warning, we might laugh. We might make a joke. Ah, be, be, be ter- terribly afraid. <laughs> I know I scared myself with that. That happens sometimes. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week, but as I was saying in the pre-show, I have like two things showing up at my house today that are going to require me to sign things. Like one's going to be real quick and easy at the door. The other one, I have to like go help unload stuff. So if I disappear and it's uh, really entertaining, whatever these two get up to while I'm gone, I'll just leave it in the show. But if you're watching live, you get to see the whole thing. And uh, yeah, pretty much that. I'm still playing around with mix bus. I made a new cable for my microphone preamp. It's fun. I genuinely did the smackdown of people saying do not use the cat5 for ASCBU. i literally used one with connectors on the end now just for fun kind of special <laughs> <laughs> and i cut myself <laughs> that, that was karma <laughs> the thing is pedro Mateus, you say that but i knew that cable was going to work the first time i plugged it in because i was like oh all right, because this is one of those cuts <laughs> where you get ignored, uh, like annoyed simply because it won't quit leaking while you're trying to work. Mm-hmm. Like, stop <laughs> leaking. And so, yeah, put everything together. What's new with you, Jill? Oh, gosh, a lot. So it was my 50th birthday on Saturday. So I got Yay! lots of cool gifts. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I know, my golden birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, what's cool is that Steve has been got me some items off my uh, LWW uh, wish list from Amazon. <laughs> he, he was also that. having trouble with that. I, I remember seeing that message show up on this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I got another pink penguin. <laughs> this one is really actually really cute. <laughs> <laughs> what was interesting on Amazon, it said it's orange. And I was looking at the picture. I'm like, no, that's pink. <laughs> so I got a pink penguin. And then I got another SD uh, hard, hard drive. This one, um, because my NVMEs are all filled up. <laughs> this is for my, <laughs> for okay. my Steam library. <laughs> And poor Steve yep. husband, things have gone up in price, and he paid quite a bit for this one. <laughs> it's almost a terabyte. Things are getting <laughs> out of hand. That yeah. SaberNet. I know. Envy me. You I know, was I looking will... at it. It was like two terabytes, yeah. and I was waiting for it to get below two hundred dollars, and it was almost there. Mm-hmm. It was almost there. It was like two hundred five. Then it went up to two sixty. <gasps> then it went up to two eighty. <laughs> Then it was three hundred and eleven dollars, and like you finally overpriced it. No, now now it's out of stock. <laughs> Dang you, Gia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, for me here, um, I've been going through all of the laptops to make sure they're all up to date and whatnot. And the um, the T42, seriously, that laptop keeps surprising me. It took the, because Debian is not yet getting rid of a 32 bit that's in the works, but for now, they still support it, so that's what it's running. And surprisingly enough, I did the update, Debian 11, and away it goes. Oh, okay. Huh. All righty then. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, no, it's a very, very nice laptop. 20-year-old, well, 21, but <laughs> very nice laptop. <laughs> it's a very handy thing to have around when somebody shows up on your live stream complaining that, oh, I can't do that. I have an old laptop. It's just like, I have a 20-year-old laptop and I can do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, for, and I can watch Twitch streams. <laughs> yeah, and do show notes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, audio stuff. Last week, we talked about Audacity and new company picking it up. And a, a little thing happened. A little tiny thing happened. Not a big deal. The internet was cool with it. No, nobody raised a fuss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about. Is, oh boy. <laughs> no fuss whatsoever. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Not even. Really. Let's see if I can get this thing pulled up correctly. There it is. There it is. Basic telemetry. 
for the audacity. Now it's the audacity. This is the thing, man. So, yeah, this kind of landed out of nowhere. Like almost immediately, there was no review process. There's boom, there was a commit. Like, hey, we're adding telemetry and uh, it's on. Deal with it. Well, mm-hmm. I, was, I was fibbing a little bit. The internet had a small problem with it. Just, just a tiny one. And I'm going to say rightfully so. They have, um, I'm not going to say walked back, but they've, they've mm-hmm. clarified and kind of changed some things. You know, due to the large amount of worry about this PR, which we completely understand, we want to clarify exactly what's going on. Telemetry is going to be optional. You don't have to worry about it. And uh, it's only going to be available in the GitHub CI. But, you know, if you're going to be compiling Audacity from source, there'll be an option to enable it. You know, and then you have things like, Telemetry in itself isn't necessarily bad. Like if I'm installing Debian, Debian's like, hey, would you like to enable telemetry? So we get a little bit of feedback, you know, popularity contest, I believe they call it, which is cool. I mm-hmm. do it on one box in here. And um, it's very valuable for a developer because it shows you, depending on how it's implemented, what people actually use versus the very loud people who use stuff strangely and want some bizarre moon feature added. But um, using Google, I, no, I, I don't know about that, man. That's probably not a good look. But, <laughs> but um, I think what everybody flipped out about was having this locked, ready, and boom, just insta-deployed with, without mentioning anyone, you know, they had this prepared, which is fine. But, Pedro, I think some people are going to have some options with them stressing that it's strictly mm. opt in why would people uh, yeah. be like wait a minute but because it wasn't uh opt in at first in fact when it was first introduced it was very much on by default that that, <laughs> that was the code i've seen the screenshots and they are floating around on twitter so you've probably seen them too uh of the code that has the option for telemetry there and enabled by default now, it took a couple of days, but they finally, uh, actually, uh, CRS, um, CRS IB or CRSIB um, was the one who made the out of branch, out of repo uh, commit to change that. Just change that one option from true to false. And if you look at the pull requests and if you look at the commits in the GitHub repo, you won't find them because out of branch. So, yeah. Someone was very, very desperately trying to go, oh, let's just change that without anyone noticing. Everyone noticed. So, yeah, <laughs> that, that mm, you don't do that. Telemetry is fine. I, I think, like Ven already said, telemetry is very useful. But doing it the way that Ubuntu did with Amazon, sending stuff to Amazon by default, as much as it pains me to uh, agree with Stallman, kind of had a point. You don't do that. You don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, fortunately, uh, that has changed on Ubuntu. So Ubuntu actually has system stat pri- profiling, which is default, but you can opt out of it. And, uh, you know, these metrics actually improve Ubuntu and the results are published online. So telemetry can be done right. <laughs> you just, you just got to make yes. sure to, you know, communicate about it, what you're doing and they, you know, had to re audacity had to retract and do it right. So, <laughs> <laughs> and they still still try to be sneaky about it. You just got it, and you're already yeah. doing shady stuff. Uh, what well, are you doing? <laughs> look at this. Maybe it's just a learning experience. And hey, all right. So maybe this is how we're gonna have this. Isn't this infinitely better? Infinitely better than deal with it. <laughs> It is. The, okay. the, at least they changed it. That, okay. that, I'm no, I don't think anyone's questioning that. At least they changed it. Good. All right. Um, th- if <laughs> yes. that was, you know, dipping your toe in the water and testing to see what temperature it was, I hope you realize that that wasn't water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jill's about to tell you about a hot new notebook, a Starbook. Yeah. That, um, the man famous for building Franken computers, uh, laptops off eBay for 20 cents and a taco, uh, has a problem with, strangely. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So this is the uh, the Starbook MK5 laptop from the UK based Star Labs is available for pre-order. And it's very slim and weighs only 
pounds and has a 14 inch 1080p display and 11th gen intel tiger lake u processor intel ultra hd graphics and up to 64 gigs of ram and it comes with your choice of ubuntu linux mint or zorin os and it supports open source firmware, which is really cool. So it supports core boot, which can be installed with FWUPD. And uh, uh, Pedro is gonna tell you the price. <laughs> So. Yeah, no, the, the, the price. <laughs> I scroll down um, and it's like, okay, look at the stats. Because the first thing you see is the price like right there on the top right. It's uh, 800 and something dollars or 777 pounds. Clever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, okay, that it's below a thousand. So it's at least worth a look. Go through it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, the 777 pound version comes with an i3 admittedly it's an 11 uh, 400 um and the uh, just box standard 1080p uh 14 inch screen and 8 gigs of ram for 777 pounds for an i3 <laughs> with, mm, yeah no uh, yeah no good luck with that <laughs> that's no, <laughs> that's way too much. <laughs> you get a lot of flavors of uh, Debian that you can install on this. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> MX Linux. Yeah. Zorin. Yeah. But yeah, no, just to really give you cool. an example, um, i3 laptop from a few years ago, admittedly. But yeah, same sort of grade of uh, i3 only supports up to... 32 gigs of RAM, so I guess that is a limitation. And Same, so, so you're um, about to tell me what that costs new with price adjusted for inflation. Got it. I'm waiting. <laughs> uh, new, it costs uh, 300 euros. Uh, with price adjusted for inflation, that would be like 340-ish right around now. And the um, best thing was I bought it with Windows and then I said, I don't want the Windows license. Please remove it. And they gave me uh, 50 euros back. So it cost me 250 euros. Now, what company, did you, buy that? <laughs> what company did you get that from? Uh, it's got Lenovo. the name on the front. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is like the difference between a boutique manufacturer, which Pedro fully knows. And Oh, I know. I know that they're just rebadging yeah. Clevo's like every other one. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> There is yeah, a difference. You gotta pay a price premium. I don't. I'm unfamiliar with um, StarTech, but you know if it's the same kind of deal. Like when you're looking at a System76 laptop, a lot of it comes down to support. You know, if you're going to be calling up yes. Lenovo, like, hey, how does this thing yeah. work? And we know for a fact, at least with System76, because we got them peeps in our Discord. They know what they're talking about. When you call up tech support, they're gonna be like, hey, I can actually help you with this. They Linux will problem. support you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. do not have to deal with people reading off a script. So, if they get some of that going on over there, Star Tech, I'm going to say yeah. good on them. And hey, Pedro, this thing has double the amount of speakers. Double. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has four. <laughs> the speakers get speakers, and I, I'm kind of curious yeah. about the custom keyboard layouts. That's a neat little thing that's built into mm -hmm. it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, everyone was very, very curious about the uh, new fully configurable keyboard that a certain um, laptop manufacturer mm -hmm. that puts Linux on said laptops was working on. No. <laughs> and uh, Joey Snedden from uh, OMG Ubuntu was so, so uh, desperate to talk about it that he made an oopsie. And <laughs> I was about to say, that's a lot of words for oopsie, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so as it turns out, the information that he got, if you've ever worked in any kind of news outlet or even done a blog on the Internet, uh, you've probably gotten information that the people who have asked you don't say anything about this until X date. Cool. Um, that's called an embargo. And what he did was he kind of breached that embargo because <laughs> the embargo only lifted tomorrow. And he uh, <laughs> put the article up today. Uh, it's it's gone now, but we did get a yeah. very good chance to read everything about it, especially the price. Mm -hmm. My goodness, 
it's it's not going to be cheap. Now, since this is under embargo, I can respect that. You know, I'm sure it'd mm-hmm. take 20 seconds to go to a web archive and pull it up. Mm-hmm. But, you know, honestly, it's already on the internet. What's the big deal about talking about it? But, you know, just out of niceness, it's a system 76. All right. But I am going to show you the video. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's there. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> because, you know, I mean, it's interesting to walk through and, you know, just some of the stuff that they're working on, because I think a lot of people yeah. have been curious about the uh, keyboard itself. And like, there it is. There's a bunch of customization stuff. I'm going to say go check out the Umbug and Ubuntu tomorrow. And, um, <laughs> I like I like the split space bar. I think that's a really good idea. Other other keyboards have done that. And I actually, you know, I, I've used one that has that and it was quite comfortable to use. Yes, you get used, tell, you get used to it quickly. About the split space bar. <laughs> I got one right here. That's what I'm talking about. For audio oh listeners. yeah, you do too. Yeah, of course, Ben. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I was I was really hoping Strider was going to argue that with me this morning. I'm like, you don't have anything better to be upset about. What? Let's let's have a good roundabout conversation about split space bars. But that was even Aww. too small for him. He's like, I just don't like them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Uh it I I I, li- I very much like the idea of the fully customizable keyboard layout like to the point where they when they first introduced the customizer on their GitHub, mm-hmm. I caught myself halfway through having the complete uh well, not complete because 80%, but uh I had the Portuguese layout basically good to go. It's like I should probably wait to see how much this costs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Stay tuned for it. Keep an idea. I, what yeah. you? Well, the, the price actually is normal for a, well, a we're not custom talking keyboard about the price. like this. Yeah. No. We're going to say that tomorrow. <laughs> Go look at the price and all the other information tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Check OMG Ubuntu there you tomorrow. Go. There you go. I'm going to give you go. some free traffic on that because, hey, it takes a lot to be like, oops, I messed up. Here's an apology. Not just poof. You saw nothing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anime 2 sketch is some weep stuff, but it does some neat stuff. That kind of it ran. does really, really neat stuff. And clearly someone was a very, very big fan of Vinland Saga. What? Not a bad anime. Oh. <laughs> it's the anime with the blonde main character child thing. You want to narrow that down? <laughs> uh, the, that one. Okay. That one right there. Vinland Saga. Uh, the it's yeah. It basically what it does is it takes uh, frame by frame and an anime or a colored manga and just gives you out the uh, outlines as best it can figure out. It is not perfect. You can see some examples uh, in the screenshots, but it works. Not only does it work, it, it, it works mm-hmm. very well. Yeah. Now, one thing I do yeah. want to point out is <laughs> you do need the NVIDIA. Isn't that right, Lana? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. NVIDIA. You do uh, need the CUDA. Yeah. yeah. CUDA CUDA is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just out of the box, what I can do, I'm like, okay, that's impressive. That'll definitely give you something to work with. And hey, it loves anime, apparently. No, <laughs> yeah, Vinland Saga. That that's uh, he's a big fan, but that's cool. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> look forward to yeah. like Reddit post of like, here's the hand drawn animation that I've done, spent the last four months working on. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's so much nicer than spending so much time in Inkscape, Inkscape or you know Adobe Illustrator if you're on Windows converting an image to lines. That that can be very time consuming, especially when you want to do all those little fine little yeah. details. And with anime, there's lots of them, lots and of details. Even if that's not necessarily your thing, why not feed it yeah. some stuff and see what type of nightmare fuel it pops yeah. out? Yeah, see what happens. Yeah, like kittens. <laughs> <laughs> you think Aww. I'm joking, but have you seen some of the neural stuff that Google was yeah. <laughs> like? That's, a cat? that's okay. true. Um, the uh, <laughs> deep dreams, as they called them originally, and they oh. fed him like the Doge picture. Uh-huh. That 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 <laughs> that was seared into my red. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Again, all this is going to be in our show notes. Go check it out after the fact. LinuxCMPS.com. So, uh. What's the big deal about this? Five Linux commands I never use. This is at uh, redhat.com. It's like their little blog section from Ken Hess. And they're like, you know what? 
Why, why would I even bother reading something like this? I mean, not nothing against it, but it wouldn't have my interest. Let me tell you, this, in fact, five Linux commands I never use doesn't have my interest. However, five totally <laughs> the original useless article Linux had a better command. title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh god, that got my attention. <laughs> yeah, Ben, I remember seeing that, and I'm going, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> this, I'm so glad he uh, redid it. <laughs> this is, uh, it, it was very, that's what made me read in the first place. I'm like, okay, what are you about to tell me what useless Linux commands are? I'll bite. I read that. I said my piece. And, you know, just to stick with, uh, what? let's see, what was thrown in here? Arch, uh, make your joke. Um, ARPA name, <laughs> debatable. BC, <laughs> that's still a thing. Uh, dump keys. Okay. You name, I take issue with that. <laughs> now uh, we have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey. Uh, <laughs> mainly, even, even though it's like kind of hinted at the end, it's like, you don't do a lot of scripting, do you? Um, but <laughs> what got my attention was I posted this in the show notes. I'm like, ah, we might use this article. We might, you know, just to walk through it because it's a good discussion piece. We're like, hey, that one's good. Or I like, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's going to champion like that one rando command. They're like, hey. <laughs> but you know it went from five totally useless commands but well, these are the ones i don't yeah the internet read your article didn't they um <laughs> oh wait a second so red hat is saying that uh well it's not their red operating hat. system what they're it's not offering <laughs> it's not red hat <laughs> this is the, the, just the, the one person it, at red hat <laughs> it's it's a writer <laughs> yes. I mean, he does have Red Hat in, par- in parentheses uh, in front of his name. Well, I shouldn't assume their name. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Ken Hess, you done goofed. <laughs> he but- didn't goof. He didn't goof. Aww. Okay, I'm going to say this. I don't think he goofed under the current title. <laughs> no, under the current title, perfectly acceptable. It's like, you yes. never used <laughs> Cool. Should have just gone yeah. with that the first time. It makes totally sense. useless Linux commands. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry, Aww. but you name is actually pretty useful. Uh, yeah, if you use you name, you don't need arch. So technically, I agree with you there. But there's BC that, is also very useful. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. But you, you get you know things like arch, you name, etc. They're decidedly not useful simply because you can rely on them delivering expected output regardless. Wait for it of the distribution you're using. Mm-hmm. If I was exactly. living in my red hemisphere. <laughs> my fedora sphere okay maybe some of these are legitimate arguments but outside of that i don't know what i'm SSHing into Mm -hmm. so i want consistent results yeah and you know uh like ven was saying you know uh the beauty of linux is that you can often find several commands that will output the same data but with different verbosity and across different distributions it's that that's the beauty of it you know, everyone can find a script for for whatever command you want, like Arch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not Arch as an Arch Linux, but Arch as an architect. Arch! <laughs> <laughs> so this was a, the second whoopsie doodle of this episode. Yeah. That <laughs> Revisionist history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and I've been using uh, BC or the basic calculator since my early years of Slackware Linux and even before that in Unix. <laughs> so I use my toes like a normal person, Joe. <laughs> I need yeah. to do quick maths. Ooh, BC. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I prefer doing it. <laughs> that in absolutely line, so. was a thing before Google invented Google. Yep. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Before you just typed it into Google, it's like, oh, that's how much that is. Okay. <laughs> well, this, that's like the moon future we live in now. I didn't type it into Google. I just type it into the URL bar. I'm like, da, da, da. all right. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> then Google's like, hey, here's a calculator too. I'm like, yeah. That, that's too much Second link, that. Wolfram yeah. Alpha. Okay. That, yeah. that's. <laughs> so real quick, we want to talk about this. Simpl- wow. Well, yes. And it is oh. all part of a. Uh, <laughs> The whole Microsoft loves Linux, so I, yes. why not? I oh, be, yes. There we go. There you go. There's <laughs> the picture, Ben. <laughs> so the Microsoft Edge browser is now available to download in the beta channel the for beta? Linux. Uh, beta. 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 Microsoft. Microsoft beta channel. Beta. 
for Linux. <laughs> it, had, it had been available on the dev channel since Microsoft's Ignite conference last year. And uh, it, it's got some really, actually really cool new functionality. One being um, it has new theme colors, which is always awesome. But the, one of the big uh, pieces of news here is it now has Microsoft account support on Linux. So you can sync your history, passwords, favorites across different devices, mobile and, and computer, which will come in really handy for those, you know, people who, who have Microsoft One accounts and and uh, Office 365 and, and whatnot. So that's actually really, really good. And Honestly, I have actually been very impressed <laughs> with Microsoft Edge. I've been using it since the developer preview. I guess I'm mm -hmm. gonna admit that, yes. <laughs> so I, I have actually found myself- Everyone try to Jill, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I have found myself using it uh, more than expected. I didn't, that's what this hands so for. <laughs> I haven't even oh. downloaded it, son. You know, it's really fast. It's actually really fast and I was impressed by the speed of it. And, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's very performant and really well done. <laughs> So I will bring this up, broken record time, again, why anyone would actually want Microsoft's latest attempt at a browser in Linux is open to question. Fair enough. Now, again, not being in the dev channel anymore, and hey, if you want some of that edgy 91, go for it. Collect yet another Chromium-based browser, Pedro Mateus. Add it to your collection. Of, yes. This is effectively now the you same can browser. Have <laughs> Chrome, Chromium, uh... All Vivaldi. the betas and the canaries of those. Vivaldi, uh, Opera. Um, yes, I love Opera. Brave, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is apparently uh, part of that performance that Jill was mentioning stems from the fact that Microsoft isn't collecting quite as much data as Google does. So <laughs> uh, uh, the browser <laughs> tends to true. perform a lot better than Chrome. <laughs> Go figure. Yes. <laughs> Good point, Pedro. <laughs> Well, of course not. you got to give them time. They're used to getting all that telemetry from Windows 10. Yeah. So, they're going to have to ratchet it up on Linux. Well, yeah, no, apparently, uh, if the internet is to be believed, and I saw months ago, someone actually did like a tally of just going through the same websites in Chrome and in Edge and just checking the amount of telemetry that the um, the browsers were sending and edge was like a fraction it's like a tenth of what google was getting from you so mm. that's that's yeah that's impressive yeah <laughs> don't look at stuff like that kids you'll never use the internet again <laughs> google can be spooky google was trying to serve me up ads for saxophones for half a month before i finally tracked down it's because i in one of my google photos i had taken a picture of a saxophone like ad <laughs> I, I was getting saxophone lessons instruction oh, youtube on my google news i'm like where pedro you remember going on why am i getting the saxophone stuff <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I came back two weeks later. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Got it. Fine. So uh, we got a slice pie for bouncing to that. If you want to help us out, trip us, you know, a few dollar dues our way. We got Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You get a gang of stuff. We try to spice things up, up to including that Mage Bowl video for Ports of Fury um, that I got that done. It's out. Go look at it. It's on the Patreon page. It'll go up publicly Friday, Friday afternoon. So if you want to read on for that. Discord. You can hop in our Discord if you're Twitch sub. You also get access to our Discord. And that's a brilliant thing. If you like this show, this is just the middle part. There's a beginning and end to it. And that's all now in a super nice, clean podcast format or video if you want to watch the live stream. And uh, yeah, that helps us do everything we do. But I got a wall back here, kids. See that? It, I don't write random names on there, but I did. And Pedro's like, quit doing that. It's creepy. And <laughs> so we, wasn't the top person, the one who got you that specifically. So you could write specific names. No. You can't just go around writing <laughs> random names. Shut up. I do. I, I do me. I do <laughs> so if you pick up something um, for the studio wish list, it, it's always basic, you know, studio stuff i don't have anything go check out jills and pagers they got like fun stuff on theirs mm -hmm. but 
this showed up. <laughs> it's kind of heavy. I know it's kind of heavy. I had to go oh, pick it up. Oh, cool. This kids. Do you remember on your monitors way back? Get off my lawn. Or hey, you kids are doing the uh, retro gaming stuff. You probably might have picked one up for your CRT. These would sit under. Yeah, the, you'd cut all the yep. devices. <laughs> Power bank. <laughs> this is effectively that for a 19 inch mm-hmm. rack, and it's not light. Aldius kicked mm-hmm. that in because Aldius is the giver. Aldius, you're already up there, man. He's just doing it. Yes. Because he's awesome. <laughs> My new favorite person. It, he's the giver of power equipment, man. Aldius has dropped If it's got electricity, like battery backups and stuff like that, him and Mike have hooked it. Absolutely hooked <laughs> us up with that. We can survive a power outage because of them. And you made that possible. Thank you. Also the occasional SSD. But he did write a note for the PC 100 day. He said, and we had to get it like a roundabout way because Amazon didn't ship it. Power up Pedro's nips. I don't know what you can mean by that with this. Have fun with the wiring, this thing, uh, unless you're replacing a power strip. Replacing a power strip, my man. Sorry to deprive <laughs> you of that horror show. I pulled the old one out and put this one in, plugged everything back in. The old one. These are really good if you have rack. The old one was so clapped out when I got it, but it still worked. And I got it for a few bucks on eBay that plugs would fall out of it so there were some okay so my nips are safe is what you're saying no i'm false sense of security baby (laughs) okay then i'm gonna keep my arms here they they are gonna fall (laughs) off when you take care of them too man that's where the angels grab you when they take you (laughs) yeah no i'm okay without celestial purple little purple nurples purple (laughs) Purple (laughs) (laughs) oh man that is brilliant thank you sir that is awesome. Now, we need to get just slice of pie. Yeah. Mm. Pie. The, da Vinci the style pie. The, <laughs> yeah. The anatomy of a pie. <laughs> yes. And uh, just the one teeny tiny, uh, which is actually a great big massive review uh, article about the pie, uh, Tiny Pilot. Uh, you may have heard of them. You may not have. Me close they, uh, <laughs> they make KVMs. Uh, that's very much a part of their business. And this one is part of the Voyager line. And, mm-hmm. well, uh, if you're looking at that IO, looking at the video version and going, that's a Raspberry Pi in there. That's, yeah. Not my that, first that, thought, that, Pedro that's, Mate. That's my first thought. That looks like a 3D <laughs> printed case. Then I saw the fan. was like, that is a 3D printed case. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and video Very much a 3D printed case. <laughs> Uh, but the interesting bit is that it has an input uh, HDMI port, not just the two outputs. It has an input and you connect that to, say, a server uh, because servers nowadays will have the occasional HDMI port. If you have a uh, one of the older servers, they do include the uh, VGA adapter. It's an active power adapter, uh, active VGA to HDMI converter. So you're going to need power to that too. And that seems to be the big problem with the uh, Tidy Pilot as far as Serve the Home is concerned, because in their review, they say that you have to deal with a bit of a uh, spaghetti plate of cables in order to get everything powered and everything Wait working. A minute. Oh, well, but you, once- so, so you're saying a Mac user perfectly at home with one of these. <laughs> yes, it, okay. it's dongles galore. All right. <laughs> yes. And yeah, it is. Once you have everything, they actually have, I think it's at the bottom of the page. As a, speaking of Mac users, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the uh, bird's nest. Uh, and yeah, it is a lot of cables to get everything up and, r- up and running. But once you do, you just plug this in to um server or whatever you happen to be remotely KVMing into, because that's the big seller here. It's not just a local KVM. You can remote onto it because it's running a Raspberry Pi. And part of their uh, software solution, uh, Tiny Pilot, they give you a HTML5 front end for the KVM. And you get options to select uh, what quality in case you're in you're working off of 3G and you have really limited speed and uh, bandwidth, you can reduce the uh, JPEG capture quality and reduce the frame rate and away you go. You're working remotely on a server wherever you happen to be. So 
that that was a very good argument. I'll admit that was a very good argument. But I saw the input HDMI port and I'm like, capture device with remote functionality. Yeah. Way cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like if I'm SSHing into a box, I, I'm going to be able to like do a power off full cycle. I'm not like going to be worried about like, what, where's the advantage of this over the like three or four off the top of my head solutions. Accessing for, the BIOS. Yeah. Like I said, if I'm getting into a box, I can already do that. I'm not going to be remote SSHing into a, a non-server for somebody unless they're there. Be like, yo, change this. Yeah, this doesn't require anyone there. Be- assuming you're not powering it off of the server's USB power ports, because when the Pi shuts down, by the time it comes back up, the server is already long booted. But if you have, even if you're running just off of the dirty main somewhere, you can go into the BIOS remotely. Well, That's- I'm just saying, you know, I'm thinking IPMI. <laughs> Is what I'm talking about. Like if I'm remoting, because I can imagine mm-hmm. going up to the data stream. Could you plug this in next to this? But get out of here. <laughs> I think this is more of a uh, we'd like you to manage this. Set up your thing, and you, all you do is you go there, you plug this into the HDMI, plug it into power, and walk out. Uh, <laughs> and now you have full access to it. <laughs> Interesting, interesting, interesting. So if people want to tell us uh, how they like to remote into servers without using an HDMI 3D printed box with a bunch of dongles, how can they do that? (laughs) (laughs) There are many, many ways you can do that. And uh, the best way you can tell us about it is to go to lacecapegas.com. You hit the little contact button. It's on the nav bar. And fill out the form. LWDW is the show that you want to send your message to. Otherwise, well, we may be misint- may be inclined to misinterpret it as something else, like some hate mail for the Saturday show. That's uh, you don't want that to happen. Mm. <laughs> One little bit, or maybe you do. Maybe. I don't judge. Hey, man, <laughs> people got different flows for this stuff. Uh, this comes from light. Mm-hmm. That's a real quick question. OBS Linux Streamlab alerts. Hey guys, great content. I'm a streamer on Twitch. Good for you. And I'm using Linux, so obviously having a hard time with Streamlab. Uh, okay. That, those two don't go together. That, no. Um, I walked <laughs> through the tutorial. I made a tutorial like three years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like, hey, this is how you set up browser alerts and all that. And times have changed. Um, we're mad uh, that you have on YouTube create Streamlab alerts. However, I'm having issues downloading the dependencies. I don't know the <laughs> video was like three. Oh, okay. So you do know that. Do you all have an update <laughs> on how to get Streamlab alerts generated with OBS using Linux? I would greatly appreciate it if you do. Plus the chat box. Two exclamation points. So you know I'm super serial. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, the thing about it being three years old is that OBS has the browser. browser. No? No. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you don't need to worry Built about in. compiling the, or building the, um, or just installing the, the browser, browser plugin. plugin, which is ironically about three years out of date. Don't use that version of Chrome. <laughs> yes. That's a very old CEF. <laughs> um, that's all you have to do is you effectively you use OBS browser and follow any other guide on the internet ever made for setting up Streamlab alerts with a browser source done yeah the problems the one that ven made was very useful at the time because Mm -hmm. obs for linux didn't have the browser source but it does now so yeah you're good to go effectively don't worry about building it just go (laughs) but don't worry once all this like magic free time appears for me i promise i've already said i was going to do it i'm going to be doing an obs series covering stuff like let's just get the basics down this is how you get installed. How do you do things like this? This is an OBS browser. One of the common questions I get is, where's game capture on Linux? This is not clearly explained mm. coming from Windows. It's asked enough to make what Doesn't do you exist. Mean? Yeah, I'm like, huh? <laughs> what do you mean game capture? Is that a thing on Windows? They're like, yeah, the game capture button. <laughs> no, no. Game capture on Windows. It captures directly uh, off of the frame buffer. Mm-hmm. It's whatever the game is sending to the GPU. It goes, gimme. And that's what you're capturing. And Linux, that's called X Composite. Now, I don't understand why 
the OBS development team loves answering this question as opposed to like AKA game capture. Mm-hmm. That That's all the text <laughs> you have to put on that menu. Done. All the problems solved. <laughs> Instead of uh, capture window. No. Game capture. Yeah. Light <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We got to bounce out of here. Thanks for showing up and we'll see you again next week. But until then, we got to roll the credits. Gotta thank Ooh. all our beautiful patrons. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay, Ben. Brought to you <laughs> by you. Yay, Pedro. Yay, me. <laughs> this Jill. PBS show yes. is made possible by patrons like you. Thank you, Omegas and Art Omegas. Theron. Are there Advisors. Any? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and a uh, big, big um, kudos to uh, Holy Toast, who is our newest, newest executive producer. And of course, all of the Death Notes and the uh, the Sea Monsters. You're all truly, truly wonderful. Crazy, but wonderful. <laughs> we love you all. <laughs> <laughs> you keep our penguins marching. <laughs> 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 <laughs>